What is going on guys? We are back playing some more surviving with rotary craft Then today guys We're gonna be messing around with the hydrokinetic engine, which I think is gonna be really awesome It's really customizable in terms of how many of them you want to chain or how far you want the water to fall before it starts Hitting the hydrokinetic engine which will then determine how much power it outputs and they're actually really easy to maintain All they're gonna need is lubricant and of course we have our grinder and centrifuge setup that we made a while ago Producing significantly more lubricant than we need now that we have bedrock gearboxes So I think this will be a really awesome way to get some extra power and use up some of that lubricant that we have and some of the canola seeds that we have sitting outside at the farm that's no longer even running anymore because it just has too much in it that we're not using so I mentioned a couple things that the hydrokinetic engine has but we can look at it real quick it's under the engines tab under hydrokinetic engine it pretty much converts the energy of falling water into shaft power it's just gonna be rotating and it can only rotate counterclockwise that's very important to note so you have to position the waterfall accordingly and it's going to need a good amount of space it's going to need a three by three to allow the paddles to spin with of course the uh, hydrokinetic engine in the center any other blocks will obstruct it uh, and it depends uh, the power depends on how far the water is falling so you can start at a three block fall which will pretty much make this thing useless but we're gonna go for a 64 block fall today to get the highest possible power from it and one thing to note is that it produces a very high amount of torque at a very low speed so the speed does end up getting to 32 radians per second it can start at one radian per second if you're going from a 10 block fall uh, stuff like that but it gives us a ton of torque and they can easily be chained together which I mentioned so it's really uh, nice to have because you can easily expand upon it and it also allows for easy lubricant distribution because you can pretty much put lubricant into one of them and it'll evenly distribute it among the entire chain so that's a little bit of an overview of what they do but we have to do a little bit of crafting today because we're going to be making not only the hydrokinetic engines but we're going to be making a jetpack today and a filling station so that we can easily build up to 64 blocks and not have to worry about falling down or killing ourselves when we're jumping down but before we actually get into crafting i am going to go upstairs and we're going to do another enchant because we are at 32 levels and you know i've died recently with the gas turbine so i really don't want to risk dying again and losing this xp so we're going to go for another enchant hopefully for the boring machine okay well this is not great i mean it's not as bad as the last one where we got power one but i would have preferred to get like efficiency silk touch fortune but uh yeah that's that's that so we'll just put that in here for later uh, but so all the stuff over here is just stuff we're already gonna have crafted it's just the lubricant hoses bevel gears which we're gonna be using uh just to put the power into the dynamometer from the hydrokinetic engines because of how they're gonna be placed We've got the DC electric engine and a lever for that because that's what we're going to power the filling station with to fill our jetpack. And so we have to pull out a lot of this stuff. So I guess we can start by crafting the hydrokinetic engines. They're actually relatively expensive in terms of steel. So if we go to the hydrokinetic engine, you click on it and it looks pretty simple. You click on these paddle panels and again, it looks pretty simple until you see the spring steel ingot. These were not fun to make. I had to pull out the uh, blast furnace setup that we're not typically using to get it up to 1,150 degrees Celsius. And then it required coal coke, which you can easily get from the other blast furnace setup that we already have and some redstone. Uh, and we need to make a lot of these because we're going to be making two hydrokinetic engines today. And then the diamond shaft core is relatively easy to make. It's just the two shaft units and a diamond. So we're going to be making those right now. And then uh, all in all, once you're able to actually produce all of this, it's pretty easy. But starting out, it's not, not super fun making the spring steel ingots. So there we go. And now we can just craft it in here. Oh, darn it. Okay. There we go. I actually never knew that you can go out of the work table and go back into it. And it keeps the keeps the stuff in there interesting okay well there we go we got the two hydrokinetic engines and you can see it's showing us the max amount of power that they're gonna get so that's why we have the dynamometer here so that we can look at the alternating powers as we increase the height of the waterfall because like I said this is just showing us the maximum power that you're gonna get from it at the maximum torque and maximum speed so now we're gonna go and craft the jetpack and that's what we're gonna be messing around with first now there's a lot of different jetpacks that you can make. We're just going to be making the plain ethanol jetpack. Nothing fancy. We can add a lot of stuff to it. Eventually we can power it with jet fuel and all that good stuff. But for today, we're just going to make this plain jetpack right here. Nothing fancy. So we're going to grab out all this stuff. A lot of stuff to use, especially reservoirs. We use a lot of reservoirs for this, which I guess makes sense. Um, so we go over here, click this in. Oh, doesn't want to go. Okay, so let's. we're going to have to manually put this in here. 
So we've got the two combustors, the reservoir, the two diffusers down here. I believe the compressors go there, and then we need a base panel in the center. So there we go. Ethanol jetpack. So like I said, you can have a lot of upgrades to these. You can add uh, a couple different things to them to make them more effective. You can see on this one it's uh, winged, thrust boost, fin cooled, uh, you know, certain things. So, uh, you know, it's easier to accelerate or the winged or the fin cooled will allow it. So I believe if you touch lava, it doesn't explode on you, something like that. Uh, but we're not going to mess around with that. So we have the jetpack and now we need the filling station. Now, the great thing about the filling station is although it does require power, the minimum power is produced by a DC electric engine, which is awesome. This is where the other reservoir is going. So there we go. Filling station. It's going to take the power in the back and we can set that up up here somewhere just because, uh, you know, we're running a little bit low on space downstairs and it doesn't actually require any flammable or any, it doesn't require any fire. It doesn't require a steam engine or any water or anything like that. So we don't have to worry about anything being uh, flammable or taking up a ton of space. So honestly, we can just throw it down right over here, flick that on and throw down the filling station. Now, obviously I could conceal this a little bit better eventually, but I'm a little lazy right now. So we can throw the jetpack in, shift click it in there. And this is where all the ethanol is going to go, but we do have to go downstairs and grab some ethanol crystals that I was cooking down. Now, this is where the hydrokinetic engines are going to go, but uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. I guess we can grab 48 out. It shouldn't take that many to actually fill it up fully. But we just shift click those in here. They get turned into the liquid, which looks pretty cool. Uh, it's pretty stretched graphic for it, but it looks pretty cool, no less. And that is going to fill it up a little bit, a little slow. But uh, once it's full, we should be good to go for the entire episode. And I think, yeah, we're good with one water bucket. I'm going to start out with one hydrokinetic engine, and then I'm going to show you guys how we can expand it to two. But I don't think I'm going to expand it to two today, necessarily, just because... Uh, we're not actually going to be using the power for anything. Eventually, I do want to use the power for Electrocraft and store it in a battery and then use that around the base for other machines that are currently using steam engines right now. And I think that'll make it a lot easier and free up a lot of space. But we're going to mess around with that in the future because Electrocraft is a whole nother story. But we're going to set them up today. We're going to start getting them to run and then I'll just stop putting lubricant in them and they won't break. They just will stop running. So... We got the ethanol jetpack, we can swap it out with our chest, and you can see we get this nice little uh, gauge on the left hand side of our screen that shows us how much we have in there. We have 30,000 millibuckets, it's at 100%, so I'm going to throw this iron chest plate back in here, and I guess we can, we can grab out some stone bricks. And we can head outside. Now this should be enough because we already have we have 64 here, and we're going to be basing what we're doing off of how many stone bricks we have. So. Like I said, we want to get up to a 64 plus height waterfall. So we're going to come over here and this is where I am planning to put the hydrokinetic engines down in here because I want to be able to see what's going on with them downstairs. It'll make it easier to get the power downstairs. But uh, the waterfall, of course, has to be 64 plus blocks tall. So it's going to be going way up. So this is going to look kind of bad. Eventually, I'll probably figure out a way to build it into the house. But a 64 block height is a pretty tall order for attaching to this house and making it look like it belongs. So I'll worry about that later. And along with this, this actually makes it really easy to expand the setup because all we have to do is extend it in this direction. So what we're going to do is most likely put the first hydrokinetic engine right here in this area. So I guess we can hop down here real quick because we have the jetpack now. So if we were to put a stone brick right here and then throw the hydrokinetic engine down, uh, it should be able to go down because it has enough space. Now, we need this three by three area to be completely empty. Even though this thing doesn't look like it takes up the entire area, it takes up maybe half the block with these paddles. Uh, these are going to be rotating and you can't have anything here. If we were to have blocks around here, we wouldn't be able to place it down. If I were to put a block here and then pull out our other hydrokinetic engine, we would not be able to put it down here. Now, another thing to note is that when we place this down, the red was on this side. So we can rotate it if we want, but you can see that you're only going to be getting power out of one side. So we can use the other side to input the lubricant using the lubricant hose. So my plan is to just run that around over here and into the hydrokinetic engine, but we'll worry about that later. So now we need to think about it spinning counterclockwise. So we need the water to fall on this side so that it'll rotate, obviously, this direction. So just one thing to keep in mind when you're actually working with this. And we're going to mine this block out right here. I'll put down a lubricant hose just to remind myself that it's going to go there. And now we can come up and build up 64 blocks. So from what I have heard, 
I believe you go from the middle block. So we're gonna count up from this block right here. So that'll be one, because that's the center block of this. So one, two, three, then this right here is four. I'm actually gonna get rid of this block right here. I don't know why I don't have an ax on me, but we're gonna just mine this away and we can grab it down here. One thing to note, a lot of people have been asking me why I have not made a bedrock pick yet. Uh, a couple people were defending, you know, why I wouldn't have made it yet, but uh, the main reason is just because this pick is relatively new before we were getting bedrock, and uh, I have better things to use bedrock on now that, uh, you know, we're using bedrock gearboxes and stuff like that. But once this runs out, I will make a bedrock pick. So don't worry about that. I already forgot about how high I counted, so I believe it was four. One, two three and then this block was four so we're gonna have to build up until if that's four then we want this to be at 60 and we want to use this entire thing up so just build up with this it's becoming nighttime out it's a little bit unfortunate this is really hard to hard to build i didn't look at the settings so i don't know if we can put this into like a hover mode but let's just like give it give it a little tap and slowly build up now you guys might not realize how high a 64 block waterfall is but it's really high so parts of my base were supposed to be built up here relatively high uh specifically this portion of the base with the staircase at it is supposed to come up pretty high when i end up finishing it but not 64 blocks that's that's really high so we're gonna keep going 29 blocks left oh my gosh this is horrible okay we're, we're getting the hang of it a little bit it's a nice view you can see the torches glitching out with their uh textures okay so that right there should be the fall that we need for this to be at maximum power so what we're going to want to do is make sure it's contained to that one block right there that's going to be falling for the time being obviously once we get more we're going to expand them further now one thing i want to note is just let's take let's take a second to appreciate the sound up here let's just oh it's so quiet because we're not listening to any of the engines in our base right now nothing's making noise right now it's so weird uh but i am going to put water down here and i'm realizing right now that it's going to go we're gonna have to fall down really quick and block it off so that it doesn't go anywhere into our base that we don't want it downstairs so here's what we're going to do we're going to place this down and we're going to race it back down and and try and block it so it doesn't do anything which would be really easy the water falls relatively slow compared to how fast we can fall okay and we're going to want to block it right here and i guess we can mine this block out if we really wanted to and it should be say it's getting there it's getting there okay so you can see it's not spinning right now nothing's really happening to it because it has no lubricant in it so it does need lubricant to spin but you can disable it by putting no lubricant in it so if i were to put lubricant in this and i i'm not sure if i can put it in with a bucket we can try that right now bucket it out of here and try putting it in i don't see why you wouldn't so you can see it starts spinning and uh what i'm going to do right now is make this a little bit easier to see obviously we could put the dynamometer down right here but i'm just going to put it down right here rotate it so it's actually facing out into the base and then put down a bevel gear right here because i had one to spare and it's already set in the right direction that's awesome so you can see we are getting the exact power that it read that we should be getting uh five th or 524.288 kilowatts because we were right at 64 blocks which is awesome if we went any higher it would maintain this any lower and it would start decreasing uh again very high torque very low speed so if we come up here now i believe we would get hurt if we walk in there so i really don't want to try it out but i think it should be okay to mine this block out right here yeah so it's fine to mine these blocks out right here so we can still see what's going on and there we have it so that is the hydrokinetic engine now if we wanted to attach more you could just right click on where that lubricant hose is and it would attach another one now you hear a little bit of clanking because they're not going to be running at the same speed but once they both reach maximum speed again then it won't be making the annoying noise and this will pretty much just double the power that you're going to be getting oh no 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 oh 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 no no that was so bad so bad what does he do what what okay skill take skill take skill why does he keep doing that he's freaking me out i thought he was gonna blow up in the hydrokinetic engine okay i think we got him i think we got him there we go okay so note to self i should go upstairs and sleep that could have been very bad there's some seriously expensive stuff downstairs is mom's oh my gosh is it the blaze farm i need to move this bed more 
okay because i thought the blaze farm might have been interfering with it it was getting the same thing over here when there were like no monsters outside so you know what we're gonna put it down right here just right over in this weird spot you can see all the outdated mod messages in chat because i haven't updated it in like a day or two but there we go now it is time to wire the lubricant or to pump the lubricant over uh but we can watch how fast this goes through lubricant not very fast at all if you were to hook up a hydrokinetic engine to a grinder and let that grinder grind away at canola you'd actually be i believe gaining uh you'd actually be uh gaining lubricant you wouldn't be losing it so you can always do that if you want but we have a fine setup over here because we've built up a stockpile of lubricant and we have the centrifuge to maximize how much we're getting so i just have to remember to put canola seeds back in here but essentially we're going to want to get rid of this reservoir right here and we can eventually use this to make a i guess you could kind of make a buffer with this but we can really just mine into the wall right here and start bringing it around so if we were to want to get it right there we could just bring it up to and then start digging through here now i don't actually want to be able to see this so we're going to go behind the wall and i don't think we should hit anything but we're going to run it right along here and do i have any torches in my inventory i do nice i made that mistake in the nether where i didn't light it up with torches and that was my bad okay so we're going to keep going until we see the stone brick end because that'll mean we've hit the corner okay so I think this is the actual corner block yeah okay so we're gonna keep going keep going and eventually we're gonna have to wind it around a little bit because we're gonna run into the opening for the hydrokinetic engine we actually are gonna run into something else first we're gonna run into the redstone here and then the hydrokinetic engine is right on the other side of it so I don't mind going over the redstone but here's the hydrokinetic engine so it needs to be going right along here and then over so it's a relatively long hose that needs to be going here trying to figure out okay so we want it to go over here and then in like this should be this block no this block there we go okay so i got a lot of stuff to fill in a lot of empty space right now but we're gonna have it go right here and I'll put down a torch right here just so we don't have anything spawning down here and we're gonna bring it all the way back around and i'll just fill this in because that would bother me and fill that in bring it back around here too put down a torch keep going keep going hopefully it's able to transport i don't know if this has a maximum transport distance but i guess we're gonna find out no we don't want that there i was not supposed to go there let me in let me in there we go okay bring this out and up so i assume this should be getting lubricant now or eventually it should make its way over here unless okay so it did make its way over there that is awesome so that is filling up now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to disconnect this right now. And the reason behind that is because we're not powering anything with this. We're just wasting lubricant right now. So this will empty out most of what is in the lubricant hose right now, which is fine. It is just allowing me to make sure that it works. But really the main thing is that I want to uh, disconnect this until we actually get into the Electrocraft stuff where we can start using what we have down here. And it just occurred to me that I should have shut that gate and we wouldn't have had that creeper issue, which I'm going to go do now. But uh, yeah, the hydrokinetic engines are actually really awesome. I believe uh, they'll probably end up being my favorite engine just because we've got a ton of lubricant. We've got the canola seed farm going on over here, which isn't even running anymore. If I flipped it on, it could start running again. But uh, yeah, so we've got the canola seed farm. We've got a ton of canola seeds and a great processing setup for it. So uh, I think these will be very useful and the ability to chain them is just awesome so now that we've got that huge waterfall which i agree looks atrocious i know you guys are going to say that uh now that we've got that it's a lot easier for us to expand upon it which is great so i'm actually going to grab a lot of these canola seeds and i think we should i think six should be good uh six stacks and i'm going to throw them back in here so that this can continue processing them uh it's a little bit slow for the grinder i'm going to throw these directly in there too but uh Okay, yeah, so it does have internal lubricant, and we have a worm gear, so this setup uses no lubricant. But this should allow us to build up a pretty good internal buffer, fill up the internal buffer in the centrifuge. And I guess something that I could do is put down the reservoir again over here if I wanted to, because this is going to start filling up its internal buffer. But mainly, I'm just going to try and get a lot of lubricant, so when we do go into the Electrocraft stuff, we can just let a bunch of these hydrokinetic engines run 
and let's see is this one done filling up yet yeah, so we didn't use too much lubricant there but that's gonna be it for today guys i hope you enjoyed the video if you found it informative or entertaining in any way you know watching me almost blow up some of the stuff over here like the fractionation unit or all that good stuff from that creeper that got in here when it shouldn't have uh feel free to give the video a like as it does help me out a lot and i will talk to you guys later